behind the cage. Dash to his right and wraps it around to the goal. Bobo O'Reilly over the top. Roy ready. Love shot it. and score. It's around weed. Oh, yeah. Bounce shot and a score. Wow. Levine with some speed. Levine fakes a pass. Levine all the way is going to fire and score. Up top, Druin. He wants a shot oh. and he's got it. Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, Arbusto. One handed oh. shot oh. is up and in. With an extra man. Fulvier sniping. Top corner. Sophomore goes back to it. Edzo turns and scores. Now inside of four minutes. Spelman. Who's the man? Spelman. Spellman's the man. That's who. Clark on the run. Shot and score. Meanwhile, Darkin to the cage. Shot and score. Chase. Extra feed. Shot and score. Game over. We welcome you inside the Division I Championship game between defending champion Bishop Girton and top seed Exeter. The Blue Hawks and the Cardinals a rematch from May the 3rd. When these two teams met in the Gate City, that was a 17-10 win for Bishop Girton. Of course, the Cardinals undefeated against in-state competition. Their two losses came against Staples of Connecticut and Acton Boxborough of Massachusetts. Exeter just one blemish. That was the aforementioned May the 3rd matchup against BG. And both teams are really rolling into this championship. Big victories in the semifinals. BG able to pull away from Pinkerton with five unanswered goals in the fourth quarter. And win that one 13-9 over the Astros. Exeter put Londonderry on the map, on the mat, very early on their way to a 15-6 victory. So Roger this one highly anticipated. Both teams have had an eye on one another all season long, and now it's all up for grabs here in this 2022 Division I Championship. Yes, it is. You can feel the excitement and the energy just uh, uh, peaking and uh, heading just skyward right now with the uh, crowds that we've had here uh, earlier, the crowds coming in here now. Uh, and uh, this is just going to be, as I, th I think you said it earlier today, just a clash of the titans because uh, both teams, you know, riding high from their semifinal wins, which were decisive. Uh, and uh, I'm looking for a good game, uh, hopefully like the one we had at uh, the D3 level, which was uh, was right to the end. Yeah, it was a Laconia victory of 12 to 10, just a one goal game going into that final minute before the Sachems. Able to score and secure the two-goal win in Division Two. Just a little while ago, the Clippers won back-to-back -back championships. Portsmouth over Derryfield by a final of 16 to 10. All right, Roger, what's this one boil down to in your mind here? Exeter and BG, some of the keys both ways. Well, we, we hate to keep on saying it, or I hate to keep on saying it, but uh, uh, the Blue Hawks have got to have an answer for J.J. Murphy. Uh, and, and they've got to create turnovers, even if J.J. Murphy is on a run uh, that will allow them to uh, gain possession uh, and get some good scoring chances out of it. Uh, I look to, to see what Coach Cameron could do on defense against uh, Aiden Drunzik and uh, uh, you know what he can do to stop uh, uh, Mr. Neal and Mr. Lechner and Mr. Uh, Owen Williams and see what that all looks like uh, from the defensive side uh, for the Cardinals. All right, we'll take a break, come back. Game time here at Bill Ball Stadium. BG looking for another championship. Exeter looking for their first in over 20 years. We see what happens and we begin to find out when we come back. You are watching coverage of the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I State Championship game right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. We're presented by Beals Insurance, and we're broadcasting in conjunction tonight with the NFHS Network. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. 
The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school varsity and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad. Good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now is a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with the Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of the Bean Group today. At Dead River Company, the work we do is about more than just filling up tanks. It's about the everyday moments in your home. We're here to fix your heating equipment, so you have heat and hot water for moments like this. We brave the elements, so you're always safe and warm. Anytime, day or night. Because it's moments like this that we do everything we do. Dead River Company, it's not your job to worry about the heat. It's It's ours. ours. Become a customer today, and we'll be there for the moments that matter to you. We've got something cooking <laughs> here in the Division I Championship as we get set for the opening face-off. Exeter and Bishop Girton. It does not get any, any more highly anticipated than this matchup, really. Two rivals going at it. Head coach Chris Cameron in search of the 11th state championship in his tenure here with the school at Bishop Girton. Of course, first year head coach on the other end of the spectrum is Matt Brewster who took over for long time head coach Jerry Hawley this past off season. These teams are familiar with one another and are ready to do battle over the next 48 minutes here at Bill Ball Stadium. Yeah, it'll be a marvel to see how these two teams clash with uh, with the uh, the youngster, if I may use the term, uh, at 25, 26 years old uh, uh, on the Exeter side, uh, Matt Brewster uh, against uh, uh, the, the old gray-haired uh, yeah. Silverback uh, uh, experience coach with uh, uh, all the experience behind him uh, on the Bishop Girton side. Here we go. J.J. Murphy, senior headed to Bryant in green for Bishop Girton, widely regarded as the best faced-off man in the biz. Going out with Cole Hiles here, the sophomore at the X and for Exeter, it. and Exeter ends up with it. Good play on the wing. The ground ball goes to the home team. The team in white, the top seed, just so happens to end up on their own field here. Neutral site, but all in all, a home game for the Blue Hawks. Marshall Lazowitz, freshman, has really stepped up his game this season. Roger has gotten a lot of playing time. Gets an early touch here. We see Aiden Drunzik. Here's Adam Neal. Some of the familiar names here for Exeter that I'm sure we'll call out over and over again tonight. Neal going to swing it near side. Here is Drunzik. Ended up on Sports Center the last time these two teams played oh. back on May the 3rd. Going to fire his first shot, get knocked to the ground in the process. Shot oh. ends up wide. It'll stay with Exeter as Gavin Lechner 
The junior is ready for the restart. Deep on the back end. Lechner fires. Another tough angle shot ends up wide. It'll stay again with Exeter here. We're, we are one minute in to this first quarter. Yeah, Nick Dahl uh, draws Aiden Drunzik. That'll be a battle all day long. Meanwhile, Neil, shadow by Kukulichus. Swung out to Lazowitz. Wants to come downhill. The defender is Dunsmore. Lowers that right shoulder. The freshman not rattled in the slightest. Going to flick it behind the net. And now swung over to Drunzik. The UMass commit looks for a two-man game. Wants the switch and gets it. Bodied up by Dunsmore Finds to his it. right. Drew the slide. Shot ends up high. The defender there for BG, Joe Belavance, getting some early playing time. The junior out there throwing his weight around. Yeah, watch for this uh, more and more often during this game. Uh, if uh, if Drunzik's going to draw a long pole starter like Dahl, they're going to try and switch him off and get him with a shorty or, uh, you know, uh, uh, a replacement uh, defender. BG's first possession. Cardinals won the foot race on the other end. And now touch it in there. Attack zone for the first time with two minutes gone by. Quinn Sepiel battling his way back from a knee injury. Missed all of last Oop. season. Shot. Score. This is Connor Bouvier, the junior Holy Cross commit with a good spin move. And well, didn't need a whole lot of room to get that shot off. Able to place it top shelf to put the Cardinals in front 1-0. Yeah, he does not need a lot of room. And I don't know why teams overplay Connor Bouvier and uh, Brady Dumont the way they do when they get into that spot at about the 15-yard line and they've just got to stay on the hips and push, push, push away and not try to take the ball away. Bouvier, got a twin sister, is pretty good as well. Senior headed to, to Stanford. And of course, Connor is going to be back with BG next year. He's only a junior already committed to Holy Cross. So Cardinals, after what, officially losing that opening faceoff, they get... They get it right on the second try. Murphy now one and one. And again, back-to-back -back possessions here for BG. Looking to build a 2-0 lead early. Coming up on three minutes gone by in this opening frame. Bouvier. Near side for Sepiel. That's Neal down in the crouch defensively. Neal trying to meet him at the top of the box. Sepiel to his left. Comes back near side. Bouvier goes upstairs. No, 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 no. Says the goaltender, Ethan Burnage. The sophomore makes the stop overhead. The outlet is out. Very quickly, Neal gets it to midfield, advances with a long pass up the far sideline, and now slowing it down is Owen Williams. Sophomore attack, trying to circle around and bring his guys back to full speed here with three minutes gone by. Well, now watch for uh, Bouvier to change things up here now that uh, Burnish has got his uh, number on that save. He'll, uh, he'll look to bounce or go low or uh, you know, stay on Burnish's uh, weak side. Meanwhile, oh, looking for the step was Gabe Albert and instead turned it over now it's Dunsmore behind the cage looks for a pick from the goaltender full sprint to that far sideline being closed out by Drunzik Williams over there to force a high pass ends up out of bounds over the head it looked like of Dylan Young the junior defenseman couldn't reel that one in it's turned over to Exeter yeah good trap and pursuit by the Blue Hawks and again here by the Cardinals yeah they trapped Matt Denman there Denman Lost the ball, but last touched, I guess, by the Cardinals. Exeter will keep it. Crowd continuing to file in a monster student section off to our right. Wow. About 15, maybe 16 rows deep. That looks like that's the Exeter contingent. And then BG, they've made the trip from Nashua as well off to our left. So a good crowd for this third and final championship here in Ooh. Exeter. Ball down. This afternoon. Drunzik. Couldn't split the defenders, and now it's Dunsmore the other way. Head on a swivel, comes near side for Brady Dumont. The sophomore trying to go upstairs. Burnich gets a piece. That's Williams on the ground ball for Exeter, and a whistle goes against BG. Exeter, a quick restart, trying to get it out of their own end. A foot race to midfield. This is again Matt Denman, the senior. Crosses the 50 without a problem. And now Neal takes over here in the middle of the field. Exeter trailing 1-0. Coming up at five minutes gone by opening quarter. Blue Hawks trying to get on the board. We're going to rifle it around. This is the talented junior Lechner behind the cage. He likes to work with Drunzik. 
They come near side. Now Neal. They're begging him to go left. The Clemson commit. Bang it. They swing it far side. Shooting room there. For Williams. Won't get through. Went off the body of a defender. It's out of bounds. And last touch by Exeter. Yeah, I think Drunzik thought that was off a BG player. And uh, he kind of gave up on it. Kind of pulled off at the last moment. That cost him. Cardinals no problem. On the clear. They go up the middle. This is Daniel Woodford. Woodford the long pole. Lost it. Scooped up though. By the Cardinals. And it's finished off no by goal. Eden Lorindo. No, they say he stepped in the crease. Lorindo the junior went flying through the air, but was in the crease before he went airborne. No goal. It stays 1-0. Exeter's Denman trying to work up the middle on the clear. Looking Disagree. for help from the long pole from Tanner Smith. Smith can't have it. Denman picked it up, took a shot. Lazowitz plays it off the bounce. We get a whistle. And we get a timeout, I believe, from the Exeter sideline here as we approach the midway point first quarter. That's the first charge timeout either way. It's the first year. Head coach Matt Brewster wants to press pause and ensure that his team holds on to the ball, trailing here 1-0. Our broadcast brought to you by the Community College System of New Hampshire. New Hampshire Community Colleges offer more than 200 associate degrees and certification programs aligned with career opportunities and transfer pathways, all affordably priced. There are many reasons to choose community next fall. Learn more at choosecommunity.com. By Service Credit Union, from free checking to the right savings accounts for your whole family, Service Credit Union is there for all your financial needs. Learn more at servicecu.org. By Convenient MD, a proud sponsor and proud to support its communities both in and out of the clinic. Whether it's the flu or a broken bone, know that you're getting quality care at affordable rates from New England's leading urgent care. And finally, by Unified Sports, Special Olympics New Hampshire and the NHIAA believe that through the Unified Sports Partnership, young people can become agents of change in their schools and their communities. The NHIAA currently offers unified programs in soccer, basketball, outdoor track, and volleyball. For more information on Unified Sports, please visit NHIAA.org. Roger, you didn't like the call. Well... I've been I've made a couple of mistakes this season on some plays, and it's uh, all because uh, I haven't been keeping up on the rule changes, and I, mm. I, I I fully admit that. But unless something has changed uh, on the dive rule or the crease rule, uh, that ball was in the net long before uh, Lorendo uh, was it was in the crease, and uh, I think that was a good goal. So perhaps Exeter catching a break. Yeah, as it stays one nothing out of the timeout, Blue Hawks. We're going to go to work, trying to tie this at one. Denman, shot, score! That's the senior midfielder, Matt Denman, and look at this. A party breaks out in the Exeter crowd. The LeBron. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Some it's, kind of a white powder. It, it's powder. It, it's it, baby they, powder? Yeah, it's baby powder. They do it at Bedford as well. But, They're throwing uh, baby powder yeah. around here. They're all dressed in white. They're all standing about 16, 17 rows deep, and they all went nuts after that initial goal by the Blue Hawks. So we're tied at one midway through this first quarter. J.J. Murphy, though, goes right back to work for the Cardinals, winning the faceoff. And now the sophomore, Brady Dumont, goal line extended, and gives it out to Sepiel, and here comes this Cardinal attack. CPL trying to shake and bake. The defender is Ryan Garrett. Oh, He's trying to chase him. A little confusion there. Bouvier on the move, being hounded by Neal. Swung Look. far side, Lorindo. Looked like Garrett wanted to switch there on CPL, and uh, <laughs> Adam Neal wanted nothing to do with it. Mm. Meanwhile, it's Tim Kiley back for CPL. Shot score! That one looked like it sailed just over the outstretched right leg of the goaltender, Burnage. Cardinals back in front 2-1. to one. Yeah, you're exactly right, and uh, this is what good, uh, good teams on the offensive side do. They change things up, they move the plane, and uh, this was a low burner uh, to uh, Burnage's right side. And uh, actually, it looks like it went in five hole there uh, as he outstretched that uh, right leg. But the good movement there by, by the uh, BG Cardinals. So Sepiel, less than a minute later after Denman tied the game at one, he puts BG back in front two to one. 
Another win for the Cardinals, but Kylie runs into a ball there. Garrity ends up with the ground ball. A good defensive play for Exeter. Back into the stick of the goaltender. Burnish, the sophomore, leaves the crease. Throws a short pass near side. This is Albert. Albert trying to maneuver. Goes across the 50. Slows it down here on the near side wing. And Exeter ready for another possession. Trying to tie this at two as we move inside of five minutes to go first quarter. And that's what X is going to have to do, Nick. If J.J. Uh, Murphy's going to dominate at the X, they've got to make defensive stops and get the ball right back. Near side. He's open. Oh. Shot denied. That's Zach Connerty, the goaltender, the junior with his first save, able to stop the low offering there from Drunzik. Ground ball ends up with Colin Rourke, the Hofstra commit with his first registered GB. The outlet is taken near side and a good clear along the near sideline by Nick Dahl. Now Dumont looking for room and looking to settle down here. He's got a defender coming along from behind. He avoids him at the last moment. Coach Cameron gonna trot out his second midfield line it looks like as well as we get a look at Connor Hughes and Kevin Broderick for the first time. Here's Dumont, shot and score. He took a hit. Looked like from behind that jarred his stick loose. Nonetheless, a strong finish out in front of the cage, and BG's lead is now 3-1. Well, again, much like the uh, semifinal game against Pinkerton, uh, Bishop Girton changes their offense around, and this time, instead of uh, sniping on the outside, Brady Dumont gets something on the inside. And, uh, you know, changing things up from what you're used to seeing on film can sometimes uh, be all you need to gain uh, an offensive advantage here. And uh, Brady just dr just drives right by uh, Caracciola. Meanwhile, Cardinals starting to roll at the X. Murphy, after losing the opening face off, has won four straight. Now we get a whistle. And we get a timeout from Coach Cameron. Comes with 3.40 to go here. Each team now has used the timeout late in this first quarter. Cardinals with a 3-1 lead. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why he would take a timeout here in the uh, in the first quarter. Uh, up a couple of goals here, but uh, maybe he's going to institute a change here. Uh, not on personnel, but on on uh, on process and how they uh, set up. Coach Cameron doing this a long time. Took over the program in the early 2000s and has brought a lot of hardware to the trophy case, so to speak. Ten championships in the last, of course, was last year. Looking for back-to-back -back wins. This is also a rematch of last year's championship and a rematch of the 2010 final which was won by the Cardinals as well. Of course, on the other side, Exeter, it's been a while. It's been over 20 years. They went back-to-back -back in Division II back when I was in high school in 2000 and in 2001. But been quite a, a dry spell, so to speak. But either way, win or lose today for Exeter, that program certainly on the map with back-to-back -back Division I championship appearances. Indeed, and I have watched this Exeter program for a long time, uh, having uh, uh, been at the youth level, at the board level uh, for NHYLA, and, and what Wayne Demers has done over there, and uh, uh, you, 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 could, you can just see what the, all that hard work over all of those years, uh, you know, between him and former coach Jerry Hawley uh, has, uh, has laid the groundwork for, for such a strong and consistent program like the Blue Hawks. All right, out of the timeout. Let's see what Coach Cameron's got brewing here. His team looking for their first three-goal lead of the game. We come up on the three-minute mark to go here in this first quarter. Coach Brewster watching with his arms crossed, hoping the defense can come up with a play. Yeah, they did definitely change the offense up a little bit here with some cutters through the middle on this, uh, on this set. Kylie back behind the net. That's where he was in the semifinal win over Pinkerton most of the game. Bouvier to his left, picked up off the switch. Going to pop it near side for Sepiel. Inside of three minutes, Dumont going to cycle it behind the cage. Back for Kylie's giving room. Similar setup, too, with Timmy Kylie back at X, uh, but right. in a 1-3-2. Uh, and uh, Exeter's in man, not zone. Oh, Shot score! Doesn't matter. <laughs> Connor Gabord, the junior on his way to Army. Lighting the lamp. Some sniper stipe. Some sniper type <laughs> of stuff there with 2.45 to go. It's 4-1. Yeah, like we were just saying, uh, you know, same same type of rotation. Uh, this time on the 
goalie's right-hand side with a right-handed blast by Gabord. Three straight for BG. They've won four straight face-offs, make it five as Murphy. With a fight off Hiles there, kept him on his backside. Trying to get out of the crowd, Young, throw it away. Well, that's what the Blue Hawks need to do right after the face-off. This is the second straight one that they've forced a turnover or have gotten possession after a Murphy win, and uh, they need to do that. They need to really pursue and rag him down. So the Exeter attack back at it. After a bit of an absence here, we're ticking down towards two minutes. Lazowitz, one-on-one -on -one with Kukalakis near side. Now the Cardinal fans made the trip up from Nashua chanting defense. Lights are on, sun's starting to set here as we head towards the 8 o'clock hour on the East Coast. Oh. It's been a great day for lacrosse. Earlier today we saw Laconia and Portsmouth capture the D3 and D2 titles respectively. This is Albert. Exeter showing some patience here. Albert going to come back to the near side and leave it for Drunswick. Drunzik goal line extended, 90 seconds to go in the first quarter, looking for a two-man game. Trying to rub off of Albert, comes near side, bumps the brakes, spin, looking for an opening, looking for a man across the zone, sets up a shot and a score for Owen Williams. Now that'll awaken the Exeter fans, they're shaking the bleachers once again, stomping in unison. A couple of cowbells are heard in the mix as well. They're back within two at 4-2. Well, you folks that uh, have been following the Celtics here in this uh, uh, NBA Finals, there's been a lot of talk about Jason Tatum and how he has not been effective with putting points up on the board, but he's been doing everything else right. Mm. Well, there's an example right there where Aiden Drunzik, who was a leading scorer for this team, was wanting that shot bad, couldn't get it, skip pass, Williams puts it in the net. That's what makes this team so good. Down to one minute. Another win for Murphy. Playing in his final game. Best face-off man in the state. Going to play next year at Bryant. Going to get your breath here at the tail end of this first quarter. We're down to 50 seconds. DG looking to go back up three. Blue Hawks need to stop here, Nick. Getting the defense chant from some of the youngsters who are wearing their youth uniforms here. Big support from the youth, yes. Seated just in front of us here in the press box. I could go without the stomping of the bleachers for at least a moment <laughs> as we head towards the break here with 30 seconds says a man with no children that's correct <laughs> stay off of my lawn meanwhile Kylie on the run Big shot oh no! Lorindo, wow took that rebound out of the air it looked like he sure did right at the doorstep stays out of the crease and beats Burnage to make it 5-2 oh man and this is something that uh, you just don't want to see if you're on the Exeter side of things here he makes a great stop it, it, just a great stop, and he can't control the rebound. Uh, that, that shot was just so hard, it just popped right out of his cross after just a wonderful save by uh, Burnich. Tough one to swallow if you're Exeter. Oh, my, yes. Lorindo, who had a goal called off earlier, gets his first official score here with 22 seconds left. And another win for Murphy. Keeping the streak going at X. We're down to 10 seconds. Dumont to the middle. Being chased by Garrity. Being hacked at by Garrity on the far wing. Dumont across looking for a one-time effort for Lorindo. Not going to get it. Wait a minute. We got point three on the clock. A quick restart, and that will do it. Cardinals off to the start. They were hoping to get off to a 5-2 lead on the board here in Exeter. The Blue Hawks look for a response when we come back. Second quarter on the way. You are watching coverage of the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I State Championship game right here on Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. Presented by Beals Insurance in conjunction with the NFHS Network.
broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, Summer and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with The Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years' experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of The Bean Group today. At Dead River Company, the work we do is about more than just filling up tanks. It's about the everyday moments in your home. We're here to fix your heating equipment, so you have heat and hot water for moments like this. We brave the elements, so you're always safe and warm. Anytime, day or night. Because it's moments like this that we do everything we do. Dead River Company, it's not your job to worry about the heat. It's It's ours. ours. Become a customer today, and we'll be there for the moments that matter to you. Well, a good start to this Division I championship game, especially if you're a BG fan. Cardinals in search of a second straight Division I championship out in front after 12 minutes by a score of 5-2. to two. Nick and Astis, Roger Howe with you. From Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, we're presented by Beals Insurance, and we're broadcasting live tonight in conjunction with the NFHS Network. BG struck first. Two minutes in, Connor Bouvier made it one nothing on a sniping shot. At the midway point, Matt Denman tied the game for Exeter at one apiece. And then three straight from BG. Quinn Sepiel, Brady Dumont, Connor Gabord in that order. Pushed the lead to 4-1. And in the final minute, 18, the two teams exchange goals yet again. Owen Williams for the Blue Hawks. Aiden Lorendo on a rebound. Able to score with 22 seconds left. And that is where we are to begin this second period. 5-2 BG. And this kid keeps on rolling. That's J.J. Murphy, the senior. Another face-off win. Starting to carve out a serious advantage for BG at the X. Yeah, and I've been watching him through the specs, and uh, he is just so quick. He's just so quick. hear a lot of comments about why he's so good, and he's doing this, he's doing that. Uh, I- I'm not seeing it. Uh, the-, the guy is true blue, and mm. he just knows what he's doing out there, and he's very, very quick. Bouvier nice tries to go low. Slam shot by Burnich. Ground ball goes to Williams. Had it poked loose by Sepiel. Sepiel trying to fight off Williams and On stay in bounds, but he stepped out. Well, you talk about Murphy, of course, he's an excellent wrestler in the winter time as well, and, and a lot 
oftentimes those skills translate directly to the faceoff X. Oh, oh huge. I mean, we looked at wrestlers for years at, uh, at uh, uh, Bedford High School, and, uh, you know, we had guys that were, uh, were semi-good. Uh, they didn't get the type of uh, uh, coaching that we would have liked to have given them. Uh, it, you know, when we had guys that were, were a good prospect, but you're right. I mean, all the leverage moves, the pressure points, all of that. Flag coming here against Bishop Girton. They're going to get Dahl bodied up there with with Drunzik. Oh, nice play. A little too cozy for the official's taste. This one goes across the zone, still unclaimed until now. Rourke, the long pole, gets to it, brings the whistle. We get a stoppage here with a minute and a half gone by in the second quarter. Penalty on the way against BG. Yeah, I don't know why teams don't calm down a little more when it's a flag down uh, situation like that especially when you're down three goals here and you know you're going to go on a uh, on a man up situation where you can double dip this is going to be a personal foul so they get Dahl 30 second chance for Exeter to get back within two here first EMO either way Laswitz near side, Williams, one more. Oh. Tough angle shot, but a finish by Lechner. Able to go over the far right shoulder of the goaltender, Connerty. Tough angle. Did I mention it was a tough angle? Yeah, it's a tough angle, all right. I'll tell you what, where, where is he standing here? We may not see it too well here. Yeah, they're going to give Owen the assist on this, but Man. nicely done. Gavin nicely Lechner, done. Lechner, he's been... One of Coach Brewster's better players really all season. Shows you why there. And we haven't said this very often when we've done BG games uh, this year, but that's a man down goal against uh, Bishop Girton. Yeah. So the special teams gets one for Exeter. J.J. Murphy gets the ball back for BG. Cardinals lead trimmed to two here at 5-3. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Cardinals in the hunt for their 11th since 2005, their 11th D1 title, all under Coach Cameron. Not trailed yet in this first half. Going to work the perimeter. They go to Gabord straight away, looking to work on Hiles, brings him to the right side. And now taking in goal line, extended far side, putting the speed on as Dumont, nowhere to go, back out for Bouvier. They cycle it near side for Tim Kiley. Perhaps the smallest player on the field trying to weave his way around the big body defender Williams. Leaves it far side now. Gabor changes direction, shakes his man off, gets the shot off, and scores. Well, somehow, some way, Connor Gabor sneaks that one in just below the crossbar. His second goal makes it 6 3 Cardinals. Yeah, for a midfielder, he sure plays in, uh, and moves like an attackman. He feels the pressure coming on the bump and just rolls and ducks down like an attackman would do on a question mark play and he just blasts it by pretty decent right up until the time that the uh, Hiles committed to his uh, right side uh, that wasn't bad defense he was riding his hips but uh, yeah Gabord is just too experienced a player and he felt that pressure and just moved the opposite direction Hiles forces this one up in the air, but it takes a bounce. Chest high for Murphy. Senior thought about going to the cage. Instead, to give it off to Lorando and head back to the home sideline as the senior continues to dominate at the faceoff X. Another chance for the Cardinals to extend the lead to four for the first time. Three minutes gone by, second quarter. BG unbeaten against in-state competition. That includes Exeter who they took down back on May the 3rd by a final of 17 to 10. That was the only loss for Exeter. Cardinals did lose two out of state games against Staples, who's playing for the Connecticut Championship. Yeah. And a tough, perennially tough Massachusetts squad in Acton Boxborough, but unbeaten in in-state competition nonetheless. Of course, those two out of state losses count towards the overall record. And as a result, Exeter ends up as the number one seed. However, this field was a neutral site destination predetermined long before the season started. It just works out. The number one seed ends up hosting the championship. Crowd again, chanting defense. A lengthy trip here for the Cardinals. BG showing some patience now with four minutes gone by second quarter. 
Kevin Broderick to his right, going to fire on the run. That one ends up wide. It's backed up, though, behind the cage. Near side, Lorindo sweeping shot set aside by Burnage. Rebound up for grabs, rolling towards the near sideline. Young is there for the Cardinals. That's the other Young, Caleb Young. We've called Dylan's Young, Dylan Young's name as well tonight. Both making impact plays for the Cardinals here in this first half. Now it's Dumont, far side. It's Brady Dumont, one of two Dumonts as well on the squad. Of course, his brother Alex has been featured on, on and off all season. So, four and a half gone by, 6-3 lead. Sepiel looking to go downhill against Neal, one of the better matchups to watch. Middle Kylie with room, shot though, ends up wide. A low offering there by the junior headed to Sacred Heart. Another quick restart behind the cage. BG with two goals from Gabor. One from Sepiel, one from Bouvier, one from Brady Dumont, and one from Aiden Lorindo. Meanwhile, Gabor in some trouble, lost the ball. Now we got a pile up here in the high slot. Everybody in on the action as they watch Bouvier escape with the ball. Cardinals keep it here. This trip is already over two minutes long. Five minutes gone by, second quarter. Up top, Sepiel. Give it some room by Williams. Near side, Williams lost his footing. Sepiel, nowhere to go. Slide comes over, good play. On the switch, they force the errant pass. Goes back towards over midfield. And back, over and back. Yeah, Cardinals touch it up. There's the whistle. It's given over to Exeter. Good defensive possession there, Roger. Yeah, and uh, they worked them too. And uh, <laughs> the Blue Hawks really need to do their uh, defense uh, a solid here and hold the ball for a little while and get a good offensive possession and give them a break. We hit the midway point, second quarter. Exeter looking for their first goal since late in the first quarter. Always look for a defender that rests on his stick when they're tired and we're seeing a little bit of that uh, out there right now which is uh, justified given the given the running they just did Lechner gonna jog behind the cage he's got one of the three for Exeter oh finds a man in front and it's Denman on the finish boy not a whole lot of room there in the slot Pulls the trigger on the pass anyway. Denman, to his credit, able to pull it in in a tight spot. He's got a second goal. I love Crease play. I love it when uh, uh, you know we see a lot of assists coming from the wings into the middle, and uh, that's when you uh, you 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 see the slide coming. Here there was no slide because there was really no dodge, but they left him wide open, and it looked like uh, Daniel Wood. Or Woodford there was uh, hedging towards the slide, but uh, Denman found the seam. 6-4. Meanwhile, Murphy, another face-off win for BG. Bishop Gerton going to slow it down. Coach Cameron waving his arms on the visitor sideline. Trying to get the personnel right, it looks like. Alex Dunsmore off. Broderick on. Joining Sepiel. Brady Dumont, Bouvier, Kylie. And Lorando, the six in green for BG. They come near side for Broderick. Back up top for Siepel. Looks for a pick from Bouvier. Goes back near side. Broderick winds and fires. That one whizzes out of bounds far corner. It'll stay here with the Cardinals with five minutes to go until halftime. It's a fast-moving first half here. Just one penalty either way. The officials have done a good job. Keeping this thing clean, another veteran crew on hand, Sean Murphy, Tim McCaffrey, James Riley, and Ron Libby. Yeah, although that ball whistled wide uh, on Broderick, man, he had the right placement. He wanted to go to the right spot there. Shot oh. at speed, too, just like this one does. Bouvier goes low. You called it, Roger. He said he'd make the adjustment after being stopped upstairs earlier. He goes low down by the ankle to get his second goal and give BG a three-point three-goal lead at 7-4. It's all about IQ and uh, reading the goaltenders, uh, setting things up for future success when you're uh, out there firing away. And you're, This is just his solid home spot right through the five-hole. Um, Burnich almost committed to that low. I, I, I got to give Burnich credit because he did see that going low. He just uh, he couldn't catch up to it. 7-4 Cardinals. Another face-off win, Murphy. 
near side. A bounce pass for Kylie taken by the knee. Youngster trying to escape. Adam Neal, the defender, gives him room. Now Coach Cameron again looking to dial something up here as we tick down towards the four-minute mark in the second quarter. BG a chance for their largest lead. And again, this is where face-off success stops runs. Every time Exeter has scored, BG's come right back with a face-off win. Murphy has won all but one, the opening face-off. The opening face-off, which I would contest because he actually won the face-off, but they lost it immediately. So they didn't take possession solid in yeah. a solid way. Yeah, but it was uh, kind of kind of murky. Yeah. He's left little room for doubt since. Yeah. And has built up an advantage here for the Cardinals. Exeter's crowd, they've got a numbers advantage in the stands here at Bill Ball Stadium trying to give this defense a lift with a defense chant. BG, they've been patient in this first half. They look back door, the pass is deflected. It's up for grabs near side. Scooped up in the corner by Gabor. Coming up on three minutes to go now. Oh! Gabor looking for the first half hat trick. May have went off the shoulder of the defender, Garrity, there. Uh, maybe, maybe. Good challenge by the defender either way as we get a look. No. Uh, just sailed about Could two or three inches above that. In the head, though. <laughs> <laughs> above that crossbar. Oh, backdoor. Lauren, no shot and score. No, 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 no. no. no, no. In the crease? He's in again. Yep. Lorendo. Second one he's had waved off. Yeah. Well, he waited maybe a little too long to release that after the catch. He, he kind of double clutched by yeah. the look, Dick, because I think he, he felt the defender coming on him. Maybe we can get a good look at this on a replay when Ben gets a chance. Exeter, meanwhile, working on the clear. They get it left to right. Full-blown Smith here by... Timeout. Full-blown sprint by Roger Smythe. Leads to an Exeter timeout with just inside of three minutes to go until halftime. Here's that replay, Roger. See Lorendo there with the double clutch, trying to fire it around. Man, Burnage on his way to the ground, and again, very <laughs> close. The yeah. officials say he was in the crease, and Lorendo disagrees. Oh man, if we, I wish we had a different angle on that, uh, with maybe Ben on the other other side uh, getting that, for, because I, <laughs> that was like a wide receiver keeping his toes on the turf uh, as he's catching the ball out of bounds. Uh, man, but here we go again. Look where his feet are. Right there, and, he's yeah. in. Right there? He, on the catch. You thought on his the, right foot? On the foot? catch, I think his left foot okay. was inside. All right. He might be. Uh, Maybe right. not. Yeah. No, I think you got it right. I think yeah. his right foot uh, definitely, if not the first time he steps, the second time he yeah. was in the crease. So Either yeah. way, very close. And unfortunately yeah. for Lorendo, that's the second goal he's had called off yeah. in this first half. Of course, he did score one that counted as well. And BG, they've got themselves Rogers 7-4 lead here with just about three minutes to go. Who needs, who needs a goal here? If you're if you're Exeter or BG, who needs it? Who needs it more? Oh my God! I mean, Exeter has got to find a way to equalize the the faceoff wins here. Uh, you, we, we, you, we said it the other day. Somebody's shooting three pointers, and you're shooting two pointers. You've got to find a way to go back to back here and close that gap to within one so that you can try to neutralize and keep in, in pace with what BG does because they're just so methodical in that regard. Uh, and uh, Hiles is not doing it today, obviously, and I hope uh, Coach Brewster and the Blue Hawks have got something in their back pocket as a second yeah. choice uh, to do something about that. I, I think the next goal is big either way, yeah. especially if it comes before halftime. Exeter would love to be only down two, I think, and BG would like to deal another blow so to speak another Certainly. psychological blow maybe to get to get yourself doubling up the opponent can go a long way at midway at the midway point as well so i think the next goal big for both teams exeter out of the timeout with the ball lechner going to change directions rourke trying to close him out the junior goes to the cage oh. turns and fires ends up wide again i think he was conscious of where the crease was there he, he was and it's probably not the best take rourke is right on him Meanwhile, a whistle in that far corner, and Drunzik is told to go back to square one and restart. Dahl welcomes the challenge. The senior on his way to UMass has not scored in this first half. Scored five goals in the first meeting. Half his team's output. Back on May the 3rd, a 17-10 win for BG. Meanwhile, Lazowitz on the run. Shot high, and the foot race is won by Rourke. 
Kuchalakis with a good bump there just as uh, he released. And yeah, the freshman up in the air when that shot was fired. Rourke, the Hofstra commit, able to beat out two Blue Hawks in that foot race. BG the other way. We're inside of two minutes now until halftime. Coming up at halftime. Full recap of the first half, a recap of the previous two championship games played on this field between Laconia and Hopkinton, Derry Field and Portsmouth, plus Rogers adjustments. Some second half analysis coming up as well. That's all on the way at halftime. We're down to 95 seconds. BG in no hurry. You play for last shot here, Roger? Sure. Sure. Minute and a half. Yeah. Kylie. That's the long pole, Tanner Smith on him. He's one of their better players, just a sophomore, and already one of the defensive leaders. Meanwhile, Gabor, two goals in this first half to lead all scorers. Down to a minute 10, Kylie. Again, it's Smith all over him. Behind the cage, Dumont, two-man game, Lorando. Swings it near side, Gabor. Giving room to the midfield defender. Oh, nice Dagman play. Hit Neal on the slide. Plays a hit, Gabor somehow survives, but his shot ends up wide on the side of the net, and Burnage has it for Exeter. Inside of a minute, down to 45 seconds now, here comes Neal. Bounce pass up the middle of the field, Lazowitz trying to secure it, the freshman can't quite reel it in, and now it's anybody's guess. Back towards midfield, ultimately it's Lazowitz himself, who ends up collecting, took a pop on the far side, and the flag is going to fly against Bouvier of BG. Meanwhile, Drunzik near side, oh. inside of 30 seconds, surrounded by three green jerseys, somehow still on his feet, battling. Lechner going to fire a contested shot that ends up wildly off target and out of bounds. That'll bring the whistle here with just inside of 17 seconds remaining. They're going to get Bouvier for something here. Roger, you think it's a hold? I think it might have been a late hit. No, I don't, no I, I, they're going to hold the ball is what I meant by that uh, okay. gesture to you. Well, definitely it's on Bouvier. He's over now. Interference? Interference, 30 seconds, so you definitely hold the ball here. He's on his right knee in the penalty box. It gave Leibowitz a pretty good pop there after the freshman made a pass on that far wing. So Exeter, they're not going to attack here, Roger? They are. There's 10 seconds. I think you're very cautious with the 30. Lechner, a good swim move. There it Shot is. Shot and score. The goal comes with just inside of four seconds remaining. The junior second is a big time boost for the home team. Crowd loving it. They're back within two here again. Just inside of four seconds remaining in the first half. Yeah, with the uh, with the I, I thought they were going to have a personal foul here and uh, and uh, have a minute, but with 30 seconds, you absolutely have to attack the net here and and good for the Blue Hawks. Boy, Lechner. Doing a good job there, faking out the defense, holding it for that extra second before releasing the shot. And he scores two goals in the first half, including the final goal either way with just four seconds to go in the second quarter. That brings us to halftime. Exeter is alive and well. Trailing by 2-7-5. Bishop Gurton, I think, is okay with the lead on the road, but... Nonetheless, I think Coach Cameron would like to have that, that last four seconds back. Yeah, I think so, and uh, just a, a, a bad sequence of events there with uh, Bouvier getting the interference call on the uh, on the movement through the box, and, uh, you know, they, he, he definitely didn't want to see the Blue Hawks score going into halftime. Well, that's where we are, 7-5. Exeter gets two of the last three after trailing by... As many as three, they're within two. So a couple goal difference here at the midway point as we get a look at our gorilla cameraman, Matt Beals, down there in the trench. Halftime coming up in just a few moments. A look back, a complete recap, a scoring summary, some stats, highlights, and analysis, plus a recap of the previous two championship games, both wins for Laconia and Portsmouth. That's all on the way coming up in just a few minutes. Midway through. BG looking for a second straight Division I championship. They're out in front of top-seeded Exeter, 7-5 at halftime. You are watching coverage of the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I championship game right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, presented by Beals Insurance in conjunction with the NFHS Network.
Broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad. Good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now is a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with The Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years experience in residential, commercial, leasing and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of The Bean Group today. At Dead River Company, the work we do is about more than just filling up tanks. It's about the everyday moments in your home. We're here to fix your heating equipment, so you have heat and hot water for moments like this. We brave the elements, so you're always safe and warm. Anytime, day or night. Because it's moments like this that we do everything we do. Dead River Company, it's not your job to worry about the heat. It's, it's ours. ours. Become a customer today, and we'll be there for the moments that matter to you. Halftime here in Exeter, Bishop Gordon. Leading the Exeter Blue Hawks at the break, 7-5. Here in the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I State Championship game here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. We're presented by Beals Insurance. And we're in conjunction tonight, of course, with the NFHS Network. Nick Anastas, Roger Howe with you. Cardinals looking for their second straight championship. Connor Bouvier got the party started. Two minutes in, 1 0 BG. Matt Denman, the midway point of the first quarter. Tied the game at one. Then the Cardinals got three straight. Seabiel, Dumont, Gabord. Stretched that lead to 4-1 inside at three minutes. Just outside of one minute remaining, Owen Williams. On a nicely placed shot. Brings Exeter within two at 4-2, but with 22 seconds left, a great rebound goal by Aiden Lorando. Makes it 5-2 BG after one. Early second quarter, a man up goal for Gavin Lechner. Brings Exeter back within two at 5-3. Gabord second for the Cardinals a moment later. Makes it 6-3. Then Denman second. The midway point of that second quarter. 6-4 is BG's lead. It's pushed up to 7-4 on Bouvier's second with inside of five minutes. 7-4 Cardinals. And then Lechner with four seconds left. Gives Exeter a shot in the arm just before half. And that is where we are to begin this third quarter. Bishop Girton. 
with a 7-5 lead on the board here at Bill Ball Stadium. Yeah, the biggest surprise, I think, uh, on the Exeter side and the BG side is the fact that uh, Bishop Girton gave up two uh, extra man goals in that half, uh, which I don't remember a time this season that we saw that. Uh, never mind the fact that uh, they were the only penalized team in that half. Uh, they've got to find a way to overcome the equilibrium or lack of their uh, equilibrium on the face-off circle. Um, put a long pull out to do something, um, but uh, here comes Hiles again, and uh, as long as uh, BG can stop runs, it's gonna be a hard road to climb here, even though it's only a two-goal deficit. JJ, what, 13-1 and one at the X? Yeah, you can peek over my shoulder and see those stick people, but yeah, 13-1, and one, and that, that one's a questionable, so I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him a 14-0 run, I think, because mm. I think he had possession in that uh, first first quarter. Well, he wins this one cleanly. Cardinals back on the attack. We're under the lights here as we're close to full dark. Heading towards the bottom of the 8 o'clock hour locally. It's been a great day for lacrosse. Three championship games. We saw Laconia outlast Hopkinton in the Division Three championship by a final of 12 to 10. That's the fifth title in school history for the Sachems. And then in D2, Portsmouth and Derryfield, the top two seeds meeting there. And the Clippers, for the second straight year, able to capture the crown in a shootout, 16-10, the final there. BG looking to do the same thing, go back to back, and win the 11th championship under head coach Chris Cameron. We're a minute into the second half. Cardinals. Showing patience, Sepial back door, tough catch though for Gabor, it ends up on the turf. Bodies come flying in. Bouvier, a good effort near the sideline to keep it in, but Exeter has it, the long pole, Garrity being chopped at from behind by Sepial. Good play by the junior on his way to Brown, ends up with the ground ball, and the Cardinals. As you said, Roger, they never quit, they're so persistent. They force the turnover on the ride and go right back on the attack. Well, it, it's persistence, but it's also the backside. So Sepal's an attackman, and he's at the 40-yard line going after a ground ball. Who the heck is covering for Sepal? There's got to be somebody back there, and sure enough, the Cardinals cover up for that guy. Mm. There's so much communication and so much wherewithal out there with this team. It's astounding to watch them when you see that kind of play go on. Persistence is one thing. What they do on the backside to cover up uh, uh, so they're not making another mistake is, is just phenomenal. Coach Cameron hoping his team could find some space here. Two minutes in third quarter. Neal up in the face of Gabor. They flip it over to Bouvier. Two goals in that first half of the junior. The bouncing shot is off target. And, and don't for a minute think that uh, you know that's not taught. It, it really is. And, and one of the funny things, I was talking to Coach Matt Ward and uh, uh, Cody Marquis, the assistants uh, for Bishop Girton the other day uh, before the Pinkerton game, and I, I, I asked them a lot of questions about how they run their uh, sidelines. And uh, I said, so which one of you guys w uh, run the box? And both of them looked at each other and said, Coach Cam runs the box. Nobody, <laughs> nobody touches the box but Coach Cam. And you could tell uh, that, you know, he's directing traffic on every facet of the field when, uh, when his team's in action. Yeah, he's got his finger on the button, no question. And has since he first arrived and brought the first championship to Cardinal Country back in 2005. Yeah. Another lengthy trip. It ends up in the high slot. And it's open season for Tim Kiley. The junior Sacred Heart commit gets his name in the scorer's book with three minutes gone by in this third quarter. BG has rebuilt their largest lead now at 8-5. Yeah, Lorendo finally gets, a, uh, or excuse me, Sepio gets a point here with the assist. And Timmy... Timmy Kiley just turns and cranks. Nothing fancy going on there. Kiley, who hails from a lacrosse family. Yeah. As we know, his brothers came through the program. He's got a younger sister playing for Bedford. And the Bedford native extends the Cardinal lead to three here at 8-5. Another lengthy ground ball battle. Oh That's Dunsmore in the mix who rips it away from three Blue Hawks. Good job on the face-off again, one way or the other. BG continuing to build an advantage at the X. Meanwhile, Dunsmore, the long pole, flips it over to Dumont Young. And Dumont, a little catch 
here outside the box as the Cardinals look for the spacing and the personnel as we come up on four minutes gone by third quarter. Uh, I will never profess to be an expert on face-offs or even know the first thing about coaching uh, face-offs and I know a lot of boys in this state have gone to you know the Greg Garenlin school and, and a lot of other uh, uh, face-off camps uh, but there's got to be a, a, a niche business out there in trying to offset Ooh, outside. Uh, Shot hit the side of the net. It's scooped up by Smith. Where, you know, you can figure out a way to stop yeah. a, the freight train of a Murphy. or. Yeah. Uh, well, one way to do that is to practice with Murphy himself, right? I guess yeah. that's been a trend here, not just with his teammates on BG, but, but across the state. They call it Boomer's Face-Off Academy. Boomer being one of JJ's nicknames and I guess for hours and hours he'll just rep with other guys that's one way Cole Frank got good yeah I that's one way Mitchell Lynch his backup on BG got himself a scholarship to Southern New Hampshire so it's kind of a fraternity and, and amongst I, themselves yeah and I think that started way back in the day in the, in the early days of uh, coach Cam's regime and that was mm. with Eric Harry's and we've talked about this before going to Jack McMallon and mm -hmm. Blake Boudreaux and uh, you know Christian Trahan uh, and it's just carried itself down the line, and yeah. they've always had a guy at the face-off X that could just dominate, and it just hasn't let up. You never tried the face-off as a player? No. No, well, I, uh, no, that's not true. Uh, I was a defender in high school, yeah. and uh, that was the first time the LSM type of mentality was uh, uh, being brought into play. We, you, you couldn't play with four long poles at that point, but I did face off in high school as a long pole. Meanwhile, a spin move by Williams. Oh, a sophomore outside. tries the bouncer. Connerty may have gotten a piece. This one rolls on the carpet near side, and ultimately, good pursuit. It's Nick Dahl who has it for BG, trying to <laughs> outrun two Blue Hawks, and he gets help from the sideline as Coach Cameron calls his first timeout of this second half. It comes just about midway through this third quarter. A reminder from our sponsor, thousands of of New Hampshire student athletes have learned valuable life lessons about sportsmanship, teamwork, and respect through participation in interscholastic athletics. Thank you for your cooperation and good sportsmanship throughout this contest. Final Forms is a proud sponsor of the NHIAA as well. Final Forms leads the way in sports registration for the compliance, health, and safety of our athletes and is an official partner of the NHIAA. See finalforms.com for more. Service Credit Union, also a proud sponsor of the NHIAA. Learn more about how they can help support your financial goals, too, at servicecu.org. And as the leading urgent care in the region, Convenient MD is here to support communities, families, and teams during the COVID-19 situation. Get fast testing, easy vaccinations, and quality care all under one roof. Open 8 to 8, 7 days a week. That's convenient. MD and finally by Northwest Designs Inc. Championship apparel is available on site from our partners at Northwest Designs Inc. Commemorate, commemorate your championship experience with an event tee or sweatshirt today. Mechanastis along with Roger Howe of Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. We're presented by Beals Insurance and we're in conjunction tonight with the NFHS Network. PG has led throughout never trailed they've got an 8-5 lead as we come upon the midway point of this third quarter Roger Exeter doing more than just hanging around at this point in the contest well I got to tell you you know coach Cam obviously um, has a lot of faith in his team to pull wins out uh, he expends one of his two timeouts in this half uh, to risk losing possession down in the corner on the offensive and defensive side of the field uh, for them, offensive side for the Blue Hawks, and, uh, and he takes that time out to prevent that. Look at this. Excellent split dodge. It's Alex Dunsmore able to clear it and leave a couple of Blue Hawk defenders baffled at the 50-yard line. Cardinals look to rebuild. Sepio on the run. Shot at the post. Rebound picked up at the top of the box by Bouvier. And BG right back at it. Sepio looking for a second goal. Dumont got a fire near wing. Burnish sends that off into the night sky. 
Another save for the sophomore. Yeah, Dumont doesn't need a whole lot of room, Roger. That one went off the pole, hmm. according to our replay, the oh. near post. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So, so no save there. Golden's no. friend. Yeah. I'm going to take that off the total. I knew you would. Uh huh. <laughs> I am just. Dumont another. That's a save. Burnish goal to goal there. Post to post. Comes left to right to get a body on that one. But again, Roger, BG on the rebound. Yeah, this is just uh, Gabor, a habit split dot there. shot. This time there is no rebound. Burnett swallows that one up cleanly. The outlet to the far side. Williams, a spin move. The pesky Kylie is right on him. He flips it over to his teammate, and there's the clear up the middle for oh. the long pole, Smythe. Smythe fakes the pass, draws a second defender, looks for Lazowitz, but throws it away. Threw it too low. Taken away by Young. Young down the field. Gets Smythe picked. picks it off. A little tick for Tat. Kylie trying to get in front of the big defender. Kylie held him. Yep. Forces the official to blow the whistle. Neal going to lower that shoulder. Brush past Kylie for the clear. And Exeter back on the attack as we head down towards four minutes to go. Third quarter. Blue Hawks trying to get within two. Drunzik down the middle. Shot swallowed up. Connerty with the save. The quick outlet, though, is too strong for Kukulakis. It's got Coach... Cameron upset as Neal comes down with another ground ball for Exeter. Denman flips it over to Lazowitz, who's going to slow it down on the far wing. Coach Brewster wants his guys to take their time here on this trip for Exeter. Coach Cameron continuing to wave his arms, trying to direct the defense. Meanwhile, Albert comes middle. Senior is given room. He's thinking about the shot. Fires it. Connery stops it, leaves the cage. The junior gets to it. Up the field for the long pole, Dahl. Dahl to the middle, pass behind, Cook Jalakis and off target. Denman gets to oh. it for Exeter. Another turnover. Denman back near side for Albert, and again Exeter looking to set up shop here inside of four minutes, third quarter. Good back and forth action here between the boxes. I think both coaches would like to see their teams maybe settle down and control the ball a little better, right? Yeah, and, and uh, certainly at this point in the game when you start playing back and forth, watch Neil here. We haven't talked about him a lot on offense tonight. He draws the slide. That frees up Lazowitz. The laser is taken in over the shoulder. Another save for Connerty. Junior's playing pretty well here for BG. Outlet far side. Young, Young. Spins away from the defender. Now Williams on his backside trying to hack from behind. Dahl to midfield. Not Dahl, rather. I said it earlier. Dylan Young with a good play. He's played well. Good one-man effort there on the clear. Sets up the Cardinals on the attack. We're inside at three minutes, third quarter. Yeah, the Blue Hawk had, the Hawks had some chances there and uh, just didn't capitalize. Connor D rises to the occasion. Gets uh, bang, bang, bang. Three saves in a, in a flurry there. Been a defensive third quarter, just one goal either way since halftime. BG with leads of 5 2 and 7 5 after the first and second quarters. Kylie has got the ball here for BG, the only man to score so far in this third quarter. We're down to two minutes. Cardinals looking for their first four goal lead of the contest. Sepiel, far okay. side, Bouvier, little jab step. Back up top, pass deflected, intended for Sepiel. Sepiel's got the inside track, though. Able to fight off Andrew Nicholas, the long stick sophomore who's right on his back. Inside of two minutes, Dumont. Wines, shot, and yeah, score. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Even the officials couldn't tell if that went in or not for a moment. They whistle the goal good. Dumont second, it sneaks just inside that near post we've got ourselves a 9-5 ball game bg their first four goal lead of the night yeah i wasn't sure about this one either and uh again this is this is home for brady dumont yeah right here That's along his favorite the spot right he just rips this one right over well he scored three in a row from that same spot in the quarterfinal win over bedford all in the third quarter three in a row with some really uh excellent shooting on display lights the lamp there he's got two in this championship the sophomore has played well all season he sure, certainly has and uh, you can just see him Bouvier Gabord just line up things in that slot area uh, the wing area that is uh, 
on either side and you just about anticipate everything going in. Final minute 20 here, third quarter. Cardinals again threatening to make this a five goal lead. It's Connor Hughes. Near side Dumont. Backside Lorando left unattended. Looks like Exeter packeting in a little bit here. Now they'll come out and challenge top of the box. Cardinals in response, swing it near side wing. We're down to one minute, third quarter. Well, they, they're, they're taking a zone approach here now on defense. And uh, look at what's happened. Cardinals go back into that uh, Astro beater, 1-4. Mm -hmm. And again, with the lead, Roger, you okay with seeing a zone, right? Sure. I, I, I With a four-goal lead? We used to call white and black, which was our man in our uh, zone, on and off the entire game if we had to. Yeah. Yeah. It, your defense has got to be able to relax, uh, uh, react, and they've got to change things up as quickly as the offense can change things up. And if you don't have a defense that can do that, then, uh, you know, you, you're not going to have uh, – you're not going to be able to have uh, some sort of leverage on the offensive side or on the defensive side against the offense. 15 seconds to go here. CPL up top pulls the trigger. A bouncing shot knocked down by Burnish. The rebound is no. guess what waved off. And you Again. know who's it waved off Again. on. Again. It's Lorindo. That's the third goal which has been called off because he's been in the crease. Feel bad for him. Meanwhile, Drunzik. Time's going to wind up though and run out. As we head to the fourth quarter, Drunzik remains scoreless. Final four, final fourth quarter of the season on the other side. 9-5, Bishop Girton, 12 minutes away from going back to back. Is it their night, or will Exeter on their home field come up with some fourth quarter magic? We begin to find out on the other side. You are watching the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I Championship game. Right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, presented by Beals Insurance in conjunction with the NFHS Network. Broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams so play with the best the new hampshire tomahawks showcase and development for college lacrosse visit newhampshiretomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com hey i'm chad the owner of new hampshire iphone repair we're new hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iphone ipad ipod and even android needs don't worry we're affordable reliable and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty and do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with the Bean Group. 
Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years experience in residential, commercial, leasing and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of The Bean Group today. At Dead River Company, the work we do is about more than just filling up tanks. It's about the everyday moments in your home. We're here to fix your heating equipment, so you have heat and hot water for moments like this. We brave the elements, so you're always safe and warm. Anytime, day or night. Because it's moments like this that we do everything we do. Dead River Company, it's not your job to worry about the heat. It's, it's ours. ours. Become a customer today, and we'll be there for the moments that matter to you. We're ready for the fourth quarter here in Exeter. It's been a fun one. Fun day of championship lacrosse here at Bill Ball Stadium. Nick Anastas along with my man, Roger Howe. Final 12 minutes of regulation on the way. Cardinals looking for a second straight championship. They lead Exeter 9-5, to five, a packed house here at Bill Ball Stadium. Electricity in the air. Both teams looking for a place in the winner's circle, trying to join both Laconia and Portsmouth, who brought home the hard hardware earlier in the D3 and D2 championships. We're live here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. We're presented by Beals Insurance, and we're broadcasting in conjunction with the NFHS Network. And we're glad to have you along for the ride. Exeter, following a tremendous regular season where they went 15-1. and one. They come in riding a big win streak after a blowout semifinal victory over Londonderry. They get to play on their home field under the lights in front of their home fans. And for these seniors, they graduated on this field from high school last night. Bishop Gurdon, of course, year in and year out. They are perhaps the favorite every year in Division I this year, no exception. They did lose two regular season games, however. They were not against in-state competition. Both losses were on the road, out of state, down in Connecticut, and down in Massachusetts. They handed Exeter their only loss back on May the 3rd, a 17-10 win down at Stello Stadium in Nashua. They blew out Bedford in the quarters. They sailed past Pinkerton with a big fourth quarter back on Wednesday night in the semifinals. And so far have never trailed here tonight. They've led by as many, well, as four, which is where we are here, nine to five to begin this fourth quarter. Yeah, and if, uh, you know, I don't know how many views we're going to see on this broadcast once it uh, uh, all tallies out and it ends up uh, out on the uh, YouTube world. Uh, but I know one person is probably going to have about 500 looks, and that's going to be Lorendo. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, oh, <laughs> got a penalty flag down. Skip oh. pass sets up the board, and it's time to pluck a chicken. Nah. Quack. No. Quack, quack. Yep. No, quack, quack. Yeah, right over the left shoulder. <laughs> How about that placement? <laughs> Gabor, boy, he's turning into game, Roger. The hat trick, and boy, some sniper skills on display there. It's 10-5. What can you say? I mean, this... This is exactly what Bishop is Gert Gerton has done all season long. And uh, you just uh, comment after comment about these snipers and what they're doing yeah. and give Sepial uh, uh, an apple on that. Yeah, good across the zone look. Skip pass is on the money, and then the step down shot over the head of Burnich. Coach Cameron enjoying the shot in the foreground. And this net has been a problem all season long. Yeah, we <laughs> saw it get tended to. Cut the other night, right? Yeah, Wednesday night? Yeah, Wednesday night. We saw it uh, during the season. Yeah. Get tended to. Well, Gabor. Ripping. Smoke trailing from the shot there as that one punched a hole in the safety net. Cardinals with their first five goal lead, doubling up Exeter here with a minute gone by in the fourth quarter, 10 5. Well, hey, blowing holes through the net uh, is not the first thing that. Uh, <laughs> Our first time that we've seen with uh, B Bishop Girton. Mm. They, can, uh, they can pop holes anywhere. Watch Gabor, these hands. the junior, is committed to Army. Meanwhile, this kid's going to Bryant. J.J. Murphy's been dominant. Takes on Smith this time, the long pole at X. Throws it up in the air. His wing does the rest. Cardinals got the ball again. And I don't understand that. I mean, if you had plans on putting Smith in, you know, as, a, as an alternative to... J.J. Murphy, why wait till you're five goals down in the fourth? That just doesn't make any sense to me. Meanwhile, Garrity is down in the box for Exeter. Okay, it's a yeah. penalty on the board, a full minute. We're halfway through it, down to 30 seconds. Oh, right. There was a flag down on the Gabor uh, yeah. uh, goal. Exactly. And they locked, well, they locked it in. So Cardinals taking their time here on the EMO. 
Down out of 15 seconds. A good stop so far for Exeter. They force Kylie to the ground on the catch in the slot. Neal to the ground ball. Exeter has it shorthanded, trying to push the issue up the middle for Smythe. Two minutes in fourth quarter, down to five seconds on the penalty clock. Smythe drops the ball, picks it back up. Long pole spins away from Bouvier. Gets a whistle and a timeout from the home sideline. Makes sense. Coach Makes Brewster going to use his first in this second half. Again, just over two minutes gone by fourth quarter. Huge crowd here on a Sunday night in June. Championship Sunday. We had a big crowd for the Laconia. Uh, Hopkinson D3 final to kick off the afternoon. Just as big of a crowd for Portsmouth and Derryfield a couple of hours ago. And now the biggest crowd of all here for this Division I championship fight. As you can see here, Bill Ball, Padium, Bill Ball Stadium just about full. There's also folks lined up behind the end zones as well. Some youngsters playing around over there behind the other end zone. And even, Roger, that far side stand, which doesn't get used too often, is yep. about half full as well so all in all a great turnout good for the sport good for both of these programs good for the state of new hampshire in general yeah and uh you're right i can't remember a time when i've seen that many fans uh on that side of the uh eustace field uh for a lacrosse game i've seen it uh, full for a football game but yeah. not not uh, for a lacrosse game see this bg student section energetic as have as the uh, Exeter fans have been just as rowdy, if not more so here. Big, big student section to our right still engaged here with plenty of time. Two minutes in fourth quarter. Play resumes out of the timeout. Exeter trying to figure out a way to make one last push here over the final now nine plus minutes. A lot's going to have to go right in this fourth quarter if they want to erase this five goal gap it's the biggest lead for bg of the night good slide by Neil BG. in trouble double team forces the giveaway scooped up by bg's alex dumont sophomore long pull and now the cardinals trying to find a way out of their own end dunsmore floats it up doll left open the long pole eyeing the 50 yard line gets to it for the clear i know it's brady dumont Sophomore sharpshooter jogging behind the cage. Cardinals prepare to wind some more clock here. Three minutes in fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah, definitely watch them to just uh, wear down the defense here. If you're Exeter, what do you do? You you have no choice. You you've got to play man. You got to stay in man, and you got to pursue. Uh, maybe a little too early for ten man, but uh, man, you got to try and at least cut off adjacent here. And it's not really happening well for the, for the Blue Hawks. At least do what uh, Derryfield did in the, uh, the D2 game, and that is close the gaps on the uh, on the opponents defensively. Mm. Give them less space to, to try and get passes in. Four minutes gone by already here in the fourth quarter. Lorindo turns on the gas, fires a low shot. Outside. Yeah, ended up in the netting to Burnage's right. Goaltender gets to it. Good outlet pass, frees Here up Denman. Denman finds Garrity in the middle of the field, near side for Williams. Good clear for Exeter. Now the attack. Trying to kickstart things here with four minutes gone by. Coming up already on five. On oh, yeah. Neal backdoor, Denman, shot score. Well, Matt Denman, the senior. Playing in his final game, the midfielder. He's got three goals now to his credit. The hat trick brings Exeter within four at 10-6. Boy, Exeter needed that, didn't they, Nick? Uh, yeah, 7.42 of the fourth. Their last goal was uh, right, at the, uh, right at the end of the second. And uh, big drought there, closing the gap to four. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's their first goal since halftime. And... Uh, we got uh, Hiles back in there. He started at the X. No, that's no. that's Garrity, the long pole. Garrity. Either way, same results. A BG win, but Murphy's pass goes astray. Out of bounds, turned over, couldn't hook up with Kylie. Good pressure by Neal. Neal ready on the restart, and Exeter's got it down four. But now four and a half gone by fourth quarter. Spin move by Neal. One of Exeter's better all-around athletes. Going to 
play club lacrosse at Clemson next year and study business. He's going to come off the field. Coach Brewster shuffles the cards. Denman comes back on. Going to catch the ball here on the near wing. He's led Exeter today with three goals. Still Lech plenty of time here, Nick. Yeah. Here's Lechner. He's got two to his credit. Meanwhile, Drunzik continues to get the face card treatment there. It's Nick Dahl just... Look at him right in his face, back to the rest of the defense. Not a concern in the world other than denying the future UMass Minuteman the ball. As a result, he's done a good job. Drunzik been out scoreless. I think he's got a, just the one assist uh, from earlier in the game on uh, Williams' goal in the first. But uh, regardless, you're right, uh, Dahl's done a great job, and uh, they really haven't tried to get him in, into an isolation situation or in a two-man behind the net uh, where they could uh, try to shake him off. Coming up at the midway point, fourth quarter. Exeter desperately trying to make this a three-goal game. Lechner behind the cage. It's been a lengthy possession here. Going to change direction, come back to the near side, trying to body up on Rourke. Uh. Great play by the Hofstra commit. Long pole pokes it loose, comes up with the ground pole. His outlet pass is a little long, but that's okay. As his teammate Alex Dumont tracks it down. Meanwhile, big collision here near side. Lorendo got laid out, however, before the hit jarred the ball loose. Coach Cameron calls a timeout. It comes just inside of the midway point here in the fourth quarter. We're now under six minutes remaining. Cardinals. Trying to hold off Exeter here out in front 10-6. Yeah, and Lechner, all he had to do was roll back inside, or excuse me, outside, and he would have had a play there. But uh, instead he tries to muscle past Rourke um, and uh, and gets tied up and uh, the ball's on the ground, next mm. thing you know. Rourke has played pretty well tonight. It, it, they, the whole defense has played re really well. Uh, I, I commend them uh, because when you're going five on five, essentially because they've been uh, face guarding a Aiden Drunzik, um, it makes your slides longer, makes your second slides almost impossible. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, w I would have liked to have seen uh, the Blue Hawks try to get Drunzik in a position where he could have uh, uh, handled the ball a lot more. And uh, it's hard, especially when you got a guy like Dahl playing you who's a quality defender. Um, you know, there, there could have been, uh, been more done, I think. Uh, Dahl going to Trinity and NESCAC school. Uh, you know, they're getting a good one there. Yeah. One of the senior captains and a veteran looking to go out with another ring here in 2022. It's been a fun night, as we mentioned. Nick and Astis, Roger Howe with you of Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. BG, they've never trailed tonight. They struck first with a Connor Bouvier goal, built up a 5-2 lead after one. And despite Exeter scoring just before halftime, led 7-5 at the break. Added two more in the third quarter. Also kept Exeter off the third quarter scoreboard. Built up a 9-5 lead. That stretches to 10 in the first minute of this fourth quarter with a Gabor goal, his second. 10-5 at that point. A moment ago, Denman on a nice pass from Neal. Brings Exeter back within four. But the Blue Hawks starting to keep one eye on the clock. We're inside of six minutes. Still a four-goal gap between these two teams at 10-6. In, indeed, and uh, just look for more of the same from the BG offense here. Just going to wear down the uh, defense in this last half of the fourth quarter, last half of the season. So Coach Cameron issues the instructions. He watches the big-bodied Gabord here on the near side, try and escape two defenders, floats a pass back near side. Meanwhile, Exeter... Trying to figure out when to bring that second defender, right? And try and trap. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, m maybe you hit that five-minute mark and you uh, you start to pop. I think uh, Derryfield did the same thing, or don't think they did, uh, and they did it uh, maybe a little early, but uh, they were down down by as much. CPO one-on-one -on -one with Neil, far corner. Clock ticking down towards five minutes. Neil trying to hack it loose from behind. Spin by CPO. There's the slide. Seapiel survives, throws one back near side for Lorendo, and he's okay going one-on-one -on -one here with Hiles behind the cage. Yep, Coach Cam directing them back, 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 get back. Yeah, to your point, if you do turn it over, you don't want to present a transition opportunity the other way. Exactly, and here comes the double. 
That's Williams, the second defender. Watch the skip now. Zepiel back middle, hacked at from behind. A uh. good play by the long pole, Smythe, who goes down to the turf. And there, uh, there's Ground the ball, though, ends up with Brady Dumont of BG. That was their chance, it looked like. It was. And they got the stall call here. Dumont on the way to the net, shot off target as it collides with Neal. We're inside of five, almost down to four minutes now. 4.23, referee's gonna blow the whistle and... Somebody got hurt. I think he's gonna allow a sub here from BG. Coach Cam wants to get one of his players off the field. Dunsmore gonna trot on, mm. and Brady Dumont gonna trot off. Receive a round of applause from this Cardinal crowd. Hmm. Okay, the uh, keep it in uh, call is still in effect, even though the ball went out of bounds. Kylie being hacked at by Smith. Kind of zigzag away from the long pole sophomore. The defender right in his face, Kylie. Floats it far side for Gabor. Neal, the second defender, closing in. And again, another rainbow pass. Taken back along the near side. Cardinals have been pretty pinpoint accurate with these skip passes, and that just makes Exeter's job all the tougher. Just all the IQ. You can't have uh, a double without someone being open somewhere. Seapiel, winding shot, whipping high and wide. Again, it stays here with BG. We're inside of four minutes. And this is a good example as to why the NCAA went to a shot clock. Uh, nobody wants to see, you know, people running around and nothing happening, essentially, for four minutes. Uh, we talked about that several times throughout the year. Well, you can always watch baseball. Oh, well, I'm, I actually like <laughs> baseball, so. <laughs> but uh, I was no, just kidding. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I get it. <laughs> Although the baseball fans are going to be upset with me, but. Yeah, well. I'm sorry, there's just a lot of standing around in that sport. You know, which is par for the like course. my age, too, so. Right. All right, behind the cage. You're right. BG just playing keep away here as we hit the three-minute mark, trying to run out the clock on this 10-6 Score. Boy, it looked like Dunsmore. he was out of bounds there. Yeah, very close. Being pushed by Smythe. Going to flip it back to Kylie. Cardinals really with three now guys almost behind the cage. Now the 10. Out of the net is Burnich. You mentioned it. 10-man ride here. Two players trying to keep up with Kylie. Sepio with shooting room. Dodges one man, tries a bouncer that chops high and out of play. Last Timeout. Yep. Well, Exeter get the ball there? No, uh, it didn't look like it. Looked like Gabord was the closest. By my estimation, dead, Gabord dead with a ball. long, a long worse. We have a dead ball timeout and it will be BG ball. Yeah, should be. Okay, it should be. Right. Yeah. 227 clock is frozen here in the fourth quarter. 10 6 Cardinals. Some folks starting to seek the exits and get an early step on the traffic, but don't go anywhere. Still got 227 to go, and we got a post game to get to as well, an award ceremony included in our, in our coverage tonight. We'll bring you the medal ceremony down on the field, plus the full recap, the stats, the highlights. The analysis, all the good stuff. We put an end to Championship Sunday coming up after the game. BG, just 227 away from their second straight championship. If they can hold off the Blue Hawks, it would be their 11th in program history, all under head coach Chris Cameron. Yeah, and uh, what that'll be number 11. Uh, I'd be one behind uh, Brian O'Reilly in the Pinkerton program uh, for most in the state since uh, the late 90s. Yep. Um, now, in defense of Coach O'Reilly, okay. the NHIAA didn't even recognize lacrosse as an official sport until 1994. Sure. And, of course, Pinkerton had been playing at the club level all through the 80s and 90s under Coach O'Reilly and unofficially winning titles there as well. But if we start the beginning of time in 1994, then yes, O'Reilly with 12, 
Coach Cameron right on his heels looking for number 11 here tonight. Yeah, we, I guess we need to budget, uh, uh, you know, an archivist uh, <laughs> uh, uh, position at uh, NHIAA up yeah. there in Concord and yeah. uh, get, start getting to work. I'm sure Coach O'Reilly knows exactly what well, that number is. For that sure. is exactly where I was heading, and there's a few other people out there that uh, can mm. uh, tell you what's going on. Like uh, even maybe Steve Gaudreau could tell you a few things. Yeah. He was on one of those uh, Nashua teams yeah. uh, back in that time. Uh, but no question, BG has been the standard since Coach Cameron came to town. Yeah. And they're going to get another one here. Out of the timeout, Dunsmore runs away from everybody and scores an empty netter to make it 11-6. Well, good to see Dunsmore, the senior captain, going to play at St. Anselm regionally, locally. Next season. Gets rewarded for his efforts tonight with his first goal. Well, I, I watch a lot of St. Anselm's games. Uh, have uh, have some friends over there playing still, and uh, would love to see what he looks like in a yeah. in a, a a Blue Hawks uniform yeah. of all things, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of a twist there, yeah. but. Uh, uh, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how he does under Coach Shimano up there at the hill. I think he'll fit right in. Of course, there's a lot of uh, New Hampshire born and bred talent on that on that roster. A lot of Mass kids, of course, as well. But yeah, but in general, kind of a Northern New England theme going on there for for the Hawks, who have made, by the way, two straight NCAA tournaments yeah, under Coach Shimano. They've had some great success up yeah. there, and uh, you know. Uh, they yeah, ran into uh, their nemesis, LeMoyne, in the, I think, was it the semifinals in the? Yes, in the Northeast 10 tournament. They lose in the semis, but had the resume to get into the NCAA tournament with an at-large bid. Yeah. And uh, when you say nemesis, you're right. How about LeMoyne has beaten St. Anselm six times in just over the last 52 weeks. Yeah. And I think I've seen probably three of those games. And uh, one of the most, and I, you know, with all due respect to LeMoyne Dolphins up there in Syracuse, I saw the most boring game I've ever seen in <laughs> Division Two in Philadelphia a few years ago. And it, it literally put me to sleep, which never happens in a lacrosse game. Dunsmore is offering. Shut down by Connerty. The outlet is going to free up. Dumont here. This is Alex Dumont, the long pole, gets a uh, step on Williams. Low pass, hauled in on one knee by Kylie here. Goal line extended near side. BG brings this clock under a minute. And the fans can feel it. The bench can feel it. The student section on their feet. The Cardinal Reserve celebrating along the sidelines. Meanwhile, Sepiel trying to maintain possession along that far side wing for the Cardinals. Instead, it's the long pole. Smythe who gets to it for Exeter. But Blue Hawks, the Blue Hawks are just about out of time here. We're inside of now 30 seconds remaining. They're going to clear it one more time. This is Neil, the senior playing in his final game, advances it up the field. Denman looking for options. Back far side wing for Neil, down to 15 seconds. Dunsmore, the defender, giving him room. Neil in attack mode, goes right to the cage. Diving shot, knocked down by Connerty. We get a whistle. Neil, a little shaken up. He's certainly slow to get up. Restart now. Dahl, long pass. Going to roll harmlessly over midfield. We're down to three seconds, and that is going to do it. The Bishop Girton Cardinals are once again the champions in Division I. They win it here at Bill Ball Stadium over Exeter by a final score of 11-6. They are back-to-back -back champions and have captured the 11th state championship in school history. Coach Cameron celebrating with his staff, the players swarming each other down on the field right in front of our own Matt Beals. A well-deserved wire-to-wire win for the number two seed as they get it done by a final of 11-6. They certainly do, and uh, first back-to-back -back, uh, championships for Bishop Girton since two, uh, 2016 and 2017. Mm. And, uh, you know, hand it to the Cardinals. They, uh, they pretty much... Dominated this game from the first faceoff, and uh, my MVP of the game is going to be J.J. Murphy. Without J.J. Murphy on this team for every game that I either called or saw this uh, this season, uh, without him stopping runs or continuing streaks for the Cardinals, uh, don't get me wrong, the Cardinals have got talent at every level. Uh, their first ten are, you know, just stars. 
and immaculate uh, lacrosse players. But, man, without J.J. Murphy doing what he does out there, I just don't know where the Cardinals would be in mm -hmm. a competitive game like this uh, where they can do what they do. All right, coming up, a look back at this one. Stats, highlights, analysis, plus a live trophy presentation down on the field as both Exeter and BG set to receive some hardware in just a few minutes. The final score, Cardinals 11, Blue Hawks 6. Back to Bill Ball Stadium in a moment. You're watching live coverage of the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I State Championship here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. Presented by Beals Insurance in conjunction with the NFHS Network. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now is a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with The Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of The Bean Group today. At Dead River Company, the work we do is about more than just filling up tanks. It's about the everyday moments in your home. We're here to fix your heating equipment, so you have heat and hot water for moments like this. We brave the elements, so you're always safe and warm. Anytime, day or night. Because it's moments like this that we do everything we do. Dead River Company, it's not your job to worry about the heat. It's, it's ours. ours. Become a customer today, and we'll be there for the moments that matter to you. Back here for the final. The post-game report here coming up right now as we take a look at the final score. Bishop Gert 11, Exeter 6 here in this 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I State Championship here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, presented by Beals Insurance. And, of course, brought to you in conjunction with the NFHS Network. Nick and Astis, Roger Howe with you. BG, a wire-to-wire -wire win. They're back-to-back -back champions in 21 and 22. The 11th championship in school history. Never trailed tonight. Got on the board two minutes in with a Connor Bouvier goal. Led 1-0 midway through the first. Matt Denman puts Exeter on the board, tying the game at one apiece. Then the Cardinals with three straight. Quincy Peel, Brady Dumont, Connor Gabord. 
Spins the lead to 4-1. to Owen Williams, just over a minute to go, scores for Exeter, 4-2 at that point. And then BG's Aiden Lorindo, who had three goals called off tonight for being in the crease, did get one to count with just 22 seconds to go in that first quarter. And that's where we were after 1-5-2 Cardinals. Gavin Lechner brings Exeter back within two, scoring just over a minute gone in the second quarter. A man up goal for Exeter. Not many penalties tonight. Two against BG. Exeter made them pay on both. Lechner gets the first man up goal to bring his team within two at 5-3. Again, that was early in the second quarter. Then Gabor gets his second a moment later. Push the team. Push the BG lead back to three at 6-3. And then Exeter's Denman checks in for the second time midway through the second quarter. Again, Exeter back within two at 6-4. BG's Bouvier second comes a minute later. Excuse me, 7-4 at that point. And then Exeter's Lechner with just four seconds to go. Sneaks went in just before halftime. And that's where we were at the break. A man up goal for Lechner makes it 7-5 BG. Cardinals, though, they keep Exeter off the board in that third quarter. That man right there on the left, a big reason why. J.J. Murphy dominant tonight again at the X. It leads to two more goals for the Cardinals in the third. Tim Kiley, Brady Dumont, 8-5, then 9-5, and that's our score through three quarters. Fourth quarter, Gabor, another. Just over a minute gone, makes it 10-5. Denman with time running down for Exeter, scored about midway through the frame to make it 10-6. That's as close as Exeter would get. Dunsmore puts the cherry on the Sunday, but just outside of two minutes to go to cement this one. 11-6 the final, 11 titles now in school history, all under that man, Chris Cameron, shaking hands with his players, including the goaltender, Zach Connerty, who played well tonight. But in the end, a complete effort and another complete season as BG goes undefeated against in-state competition. They beat Exeter twice, and they wind up as D1 champs once again in 2022. Yes, indeed. And uh, if you, you, the scariest thing I'm seeing as I tally up my sheet here is the fact, with the exception of that last goal by uh, Alexander uh, Dunsmore, who was a senior, every single other goal scored in this game was made by an underclassman. Scary. Scary. This this same group that scored 10 goals tonight before the 10-man 10, 10 ride got uh, put into effect by Exeter late, uh, where that was an empty net goal by Dunsmore. Uh, they're going to be back here next year, guys. Uh, Division One better be ready for it because uh, I just don't see any flaws in their game, no matter what we're talking about out there. You take away two man-up goals by Exeter, and you, 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 you take uh, 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 Denman out of the game, uh, who had three goals tonight. Uh, by the way, he's going up to St. Joe's and play for Billy Constantino uh, up, in the, uh, up in the good old state of Maine. Uh, the Exeter was literally stifled here tonight on offense, and they only had the one goal by Denman in the second half. Uh, don't understand quite why they didn't uh, try to do something to offset Murphy a little earlier in the game. Uh, I think they waited too long. Uh, that might just be, uh, you know, coaching and experience. I don't know, but the, 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 somebody out there has got to find a way between now and the third Monday in March of 2023 when uh, high school lacrosse starts again. Find a way out in D1 to figure out J.J. Murphy and Cole Frank. Easier said than done. Yeah, but Murphy's, uh, you know. He's no longer a part of the picture. He'll no be in Bryant the picture. at the NCAA D1 level next year. Guys there they like are. Murphy. <laughs> yeah. There they are, the Cardinals enjoying another one, the 11th in school history, back-to-back -back titles. Goaltender in the mix there. Roger Connerty played well tonight. We know about J.J. Murphy, but let's get some of those final numbers for those two guys. Yeah, uh, officially, I guess we're going to go 20 for Murphy on faceoffs and one for Exeter, which was the very first one. Um, I think Murphy deserves the one. I'm going to give him a 21-0 because I had it marked down originally as his win. Uh, so 21-0 at the faceoff X in my book. Uh, and the goaltenders, uh, with the exception of uh, Connerty really being tested in the third quarter, uh, I have numbers that uh, equal each other, seven saves each uh, for the uh, mm. two goaltenders. That's about right. All right, Roger, your final thoughts, not just on this one, but a full day of championship lacrosse here. Another success, I think, for the NHIAA. Us here at Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire and our friends at the NFHS Network. Yeah, already uh, uh, anxious to start next year. Uh, 
Uh, You'd start it tomorrow if you had the chance. Uh, I would, uh, and uh, I know my sons uh, will be coaching on the uh, club circuit this summer. Mm. Uh, probably be tagging along with them, and uh, uh, certainly uh, looking forward to uh, seeing some PLL action. But uh, it's been a great year. Uh, wish we could have done a few more uh, Division Three games. Uh, I, I was unable to make the uh, Plymouth game against Trinity uh, due to some family uh, uh, obligations. But, uh, man, uh, it, it's really been a great year. And yeah. uh, the talent, uh, I think, is back uh, from the COVID and the short seasons we had. Uh, yeah. But uh, very, very uh, good season all in all for NHIAA. Wins across the board. BG, another championship celebrating down there with their fans. After receiving their hardware, look out. I think there's a sabotage operation coming up against Coach Cameron. They've got, from the looks there, oh, a the sneaking. You've heard of the hidden ball trick? Yeah. Well, here comes the hidden jug they, trick. <laughs> they've got a, a full. Here it comes, here it Coach comes. Cameron. Oh, yeah. Look out, it. pal. Uh -oh. He wants it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he, knew, he knew he wasn't getting it off that easy. Yeah, no, no, no. For sure. That's no, the 11th no, no. time he's had the Gatorade shower <laughs> as a member of the Cardinal staff. Yeah. Been a fun day. want to thank everybody from the top on down. We'll start with the president of the NHIAA, Jeff Collins. Always very kind to us. We appreciate him looking out for Friday Night Lights New Hampshire and working with us throughout the process. And that includes the folks over at the NFHS Network. Don Boyle, always willing to open up the budget and bring us into the fold. We appreciate Don and his staff and of course all the operations people on the scene starting with athletic director Bill Ball here at Exeter, athletic uh, public address announcer Sherm Chester. Always good to us and we appreciate seeing him annually at this point out here on the seacoast. want to thank our sponsors at Friday Night Lights New Hampshire, Beals Insurance, the New Hampshire Tomahawks, MG Sports Fundraising, New Hampshire iPhone Repair, Dead River Company, and of course the Bean Group and Roger Howe Real Estate for bearing with us all season long. For our crew at Friday Night Lights New Hampshire, including our videographers John Barron, Craig Incardoni, and Gorilla Cameraman Matt Beals. Doing a great job tonight bringing you the visuals, the sights, and sounds from here at Bill Ball Stadium. Of course, the man putting it all together back at the Beals Insurance Studios in Bedford is the man behind the curtain. Director Ben Beals working very hard all season long. And of course, the hidden hand, the big man in the big chair, executive producer Steve Beals on the scene here and doing a lot of the behind the scenes work to get us up and running. I want to thank you, Roger, for bearing with me all ah, season. It's been a great pleasure. It's been fun. Everybody up here in the booth with yeah. all the boys, uh, Craig and John and full team effort for sure. We appreciate you, Roger for bringing your intel to the table. My name, of course, is Nick Anastas saying so long. Final score, final time, Bishop Gurton 11, Exeter 6. This has been a presentation of the 2022 NHIAA Boys Lacrosse Division I Championship. Right here on Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire, presented by Beals Insurance in conjunction with the NFHS Network.